Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have a craft room organization video for you where I'm going to attempt to wrangle my giant craft stash and make it organized. Now I have a guest room here that doesn't get a lot of use and I wanted to see if I could use it for a storeroom for my craft supplies. And so that is exactly what we're going to do. Now, you probably recognize these. I picked these up at Dollar Tree, the little pegboards. They come in the squares. They also come in rectangles. And I kind of got what I could get. I hung them um, with two hooks on the top of each one, actually screwing them into the wall because I want them to be nice and sturdy so that I can cover that entire wall with a pegboard, kind of like an, my own little Dollar Tree, right? So to start off the first wall, I'm gonna see if I can put all of these Dollar Tree signs on there that I use for crafting. Now, hopefully your stash is not as huge as mine, but since I have this YouTube channel, my stash is really big and I need the items because a lot of times the store is closed when I have time to craft. So we're gonna start here on this main wall. I have a little wall between the closet and kind of the back of a door. So I had enough to do like five across on this one of the little squares. And this one I kind of wanted to do like, you know, the plain Dollar Tree signs. So I'm going with like the wood signs. I'm trying to group them together, make it more organized so that I can find exactly what I'm looking for. And I love these blank signs they have at the Dollar Tree. You know, when I started my channel, you had to kind of take like whatever signs they had and start from scratch but it's such a benefit to be able to have like just blank signs like this, right? And I love these, they're small, they're very versatile. And then I, of course, I love like the raw wood, like these long signs. Sometimes I put several together to make like a larger sign or something like that, but those will hang nicely there. I do have plans for storage underneath of this as well, up against this wall, so I don't wanna go too low with these. And then they have the little, you know, smaller signs like this too. You'll also get a peek in this video at my craft stash, kind of see what I've got going on over here. Over here, we're gonna keep with the plain wood theme with the Dollar Tree wood rounds. And these are the metal hooks. They have the metal or the plastic hooks for the pegboard at Dollar Tree. I kind of prefer the metal ones because it seems like things don't fall off as much. Now moving up, your girl's up on a step ladder and we're gonna do the top row. I made it high enough that there's room for an entire another row of signs, but not so high that short me can't like get them down without getting on a ladder. But for this part, I did need to get up on a step stool. And I'm just gonna keep sorting through my stash. Now this video, it took me four entire days to film this video. Oh my goodness, this is so much work. I was almost regretting <laughs> regretting starting it, uh, but I'm so glad now that it's done. And so again, I'm just kind of doing my plain wood signs across here, whatever I have. I have some thrifted signs, just whatever I can kind of remake. Whatever I can hang, I'm definitely gonna hang. It's gonna free up bin storage, which we're gonna be doing a lot of bin storage in this organization video. And I, I would say that I probably got about 95% of my craft stash in this room. And so I think that's pretty good. Like paint, paintbrushes and glue, stuff like that, scissors. I actually have on my work desk, which I do all of my crafting out in the garage. We have like a built in um, workbench and that's where I do all of my crafting where I stand. And I really like that, that works out well for me. It has better lighting. Um, than this room. So this is just gonna be my craft stash room. <laughs> now, I also want it to be functional though, because this is my guest room, but you know, my guest room is only used one or two times a year. So I don't have a very big house. And so I was thinking it would be a much better use of space to store all my craft supplies in here, a nice clean place, a place that I can just come grab whatever I need. And I think it's gonna work out really well. 
what I did um, is I took my bed apart. I had like a queen size, like kind of storage bed um, that folds up the frame of it folds up and I actually folded it up and put it in the closet over there. And I'll show you kind of where I hid my mattress in this room as well. Kind of did my own little version of a Murphy bed. Hey guys, we did really good. All but those last few fit up there. So we're gonna add that to our next part of my craft stash, which was my Dollar Tree signs. These are kind of signs that are like leftover from different holidays, but things I can reuse and not necessarily seasonal signs. Um, like for holidays, which I probably have stored away with like holiday storage. And so these are kind of all different, very colorful and stuff. I'm gonna actually hide these back here behind the door where I have some more of these little pegboard. I love these little pegboards from the Dollar Tree. I think it's such a great value. So if you have a place to hang them, I would highly recommend them. And I'm just kind of doing, as you can see, very miscellaneous. The pumpkin signs, I probably meant to put away with storage, but those can be used for, um, you know, Halloween, fall, Thanksgiving, so I'm sure we will be able to use those. And then just some of the longer and abnormally shaped signs. Going into spring and summer, I want those to be readily available. And you know, just kind of some generic things too, like the windows and stuff like that, and like the little jar signs. Now down below that, we're gonna do another row as well. I kind of like the square ones more because you can do like, you know, two signs kind of on top of each other. So these all have to be a little bit more creative, just kind of hanging kind of wherever it will fit and just hang the rest of my kind of miscellaneous signs. I'm really going through, I went through my entire craft stash, which fairly, you know, I kind of had it all over my house. I had it in my guest room. I've had it in closets. I had it in the garage kind of wherever. I used to have it under the guest beds that I took apart. So this is going to be so much better and I'm going to be so happy when this is done. But again, four days. So it definitely took some time. So just kind of filling out whatever I have, whatever's going to fit. I kind of had to switch to the plastic hooks. You can see there now because I was out of the metal ones, but kind of more lightweight things on those. But I do again, like the metal ones a little bit better. Now I had that little tiny wall there behind the door. So I kind of wanted to see what I could fit there. And I thought maybe some of the longer like Dollar Tree stickers and stuff like that would be good there. Um, they're nice and skinny and can be readily available when I go to grab them. Then up top again, I don't really have like a lot of room, but I think I have enough room for the wood bead reefs. And I always try to pick these up whenever I see them because I love them <laughs> from Dollar Tree. I think they're so cute and these fit perfectly there. I used one of the bigger rings to hold it so I could put a whole bunch of them on there. But that's how my first wall turned out for my craft room organization. As you can see, those pegboards, uh, if you screw them into your wall, are really sturdy because I really loaded these up. Now for the back of the door, I don't want to leave any surfaces unused for storage in this room. And so we're going to use a little shoe bag that I got at Walmart. It was just a few dollars and I'm going to hook that onto the back of the door so we can use that space back there. I didn't want anything too big though because I want the door to be able to open all the way but I think this is not gonna take up much room at all. It's like the clear plastic and white, just the cheap shoe rack. And I thought it'd be a perfect place to display my ribbon stash. I buy way too much ribbon and way too much florals. You'll see that today. <laughs> but maybe since I have it so organized, maybe I'll know what I have and stop buying so much of this stuff, but I do use it in my DIYs. And so at the top, I'm just kind of starting with like a theme of like pattern um, ribbon from the Dollar Tree and putting them in there. You probably could fit three rows, but two rows felt re fit really well. So I was getting kind of going with two rows down here on the second row. This is all of my like coastal living, coastal living ribbon that I get every spring at Dollar Tree with the beach theme, which you guys know I use a lot. So they kind of have their own row and we can move on down. Again, I'm doing kind of some of the prints. I have a lot of like the gingham ribbon and stuff like that from Dollar Tree. So I'm trying to pair that all together. 
lots of different colors and styles of that to kind of give that an organized feel, kind of doing it by pattern. Now down here, I kind of have more solids, not really color coordinating anything, just kind of print, check, beach, color kind of theme here as I organize these and load this thing up. I was able to get so many things of ribbon in this. It was really impressive. These are the last two rows down here in our little shoe bag. And I'm going to do some of like the burlap ribbon down here. Um, you can only fit about two of these side by side because these are a lot bigger, but they definitely fit in here well at, as well. And I want to be able to use this room as a guest room still. So I'm going to have to be versatile. I'm trying to store everything on the walls. And anything that's not on the walls, I'm going to have like on wheels so that I can wheel it out when I have guests and I can set up the bed and still use this room as a guest room. But when it's not being used most of the year, it's going to serve a great purpose organizing my craft stash. So this is how the ribbons look hanging on the back of my door. And I kind of did even some of the mesh ribbon down there at the bottom just whatever I could get to fit. And I used that corner behind the door really wisely. The door opens just fine. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Now for storage underneath those. I picked up two of these like two by two of the 13 inch cube organizers from Target. I got these on clearance. I didn't really care what color they were. They're a little darker than the other ones we're gonna use today but they're nice and short so they can provide a great countertop for my Cricut machines. And there's a plug on that wall as well so I can use them here too, so that's great. I even have a little bit of room left over for my mats. Now I want the Cricut vinyl to be close by so I'm gonna store that in some of these Target um, plastic bins. These work great with the large 13 inch cubbies and we're going to be using a lot of these today. Some white and some in like, like the light mint green. Now this is my vinyl stash. I'm kind of sorting mine into vinyl and then HTV, different things I'm going to be needing for my Cricut and it's going to be nice and handy because it's going to be right there underneath my machine. Now this is like all of my HTV. You know, once you open it, it gets a little confusing sometimes what's HTV and what's vinyl. So I always try to keep mine separated. And so a bin of this is going to be perfect. It's large enough to hold all of them. And I just pile it up and we can store this under the Cricut machine as well. I'm not going to need all of that storage, but probably the whole top row. These are the specific Joy Extra supplies that I have for my Joy Extra machines. I want to keep those separate as well. So I'm going to store those right there underneath my Joy Extra machine. And then this is like the pens, the card making, the woods, different Cricut supplies that I don't necessarily want mixed together with my other kind, but I think that's going to be a great finish for like kind of my row of Cricut supplies there my labels and such as well. I plugged everything in. It's all ready to go over there. Now at the bottom, I'm going to store some signs. So these are kind of um, signs. Most of them don't have hangers. A lot of them are just like the plain wood. Some are like dollar spot, thrifted, but um, the plain wood ones are from the Dollar Tree. These are the ones that are like eight and a half by 11. I love these. And I'm just gonna pile this kind of as full as I can get it for signs that are ready to DIY. Now, this is kind of some of the chunkier signs I'm gonna do next. A lot of these are like the shelves from the Dollar Tree, some of the thicker signs from like the Target Dollar Spot and stuff like that, but more signs that are kind of packaged with like hangers that aren't really accessible quite yet. And we're gonna load that little bit up as well and store that under the Cricut machines as well. Now, the, this is like my craft wood that I use a lot from the Dollar Tree, and I use a lot of like the Dollar Tree bamboo cutting boards. And so those are kind of similar, so we're gonna store those all together as well. Kind of pile that one up too. Being on the bottom, the heavy wood is gonna be a good place for that too. And then I love to craft with these. I always try to pick these up. As you can see, I always grab a bunch of them because I use these all the time, the little shelves from Dollar Tree. 
to make signs. And I'm gonna pile up all of mine here in one place, even some of the smaller size too, and finish off this part of the wall. So I think we're doing a really good job of using all the space that we've got there. That's kind of like a little recap of what we've done so far. I don't wanna waste like any storage at all on this wall though. And I have the closet door. So I kind of wanted to do like, it's kind of a shoe rack. I got this on Amazon. I'll post, a, I'll post it in my Amazon shop as well. Since I was doing it on a sliding door, I did have to use zip ties to get mine to work. But I had this huge floral stash that I thought, what if I could get it all in here? So that is what we're gonna attempt to do. And this is a great way to store your florals because you can see exactly what you have when you're crafting. You can just grab whatever you need. I just started right there at the bottom and started doing florals and working my way up. I had enough florals to fill up two of the baskets. Then it's kind of like some of the coral, um, plants from Dollar Tree and some of the shore living with like the seahorses and shells, kind of like some of the weedy stuff um, here in the next basket to kind of keep it uniform so I can kind of know exactly which spot to go to on here. And we're going to keep loading this up. As I go more towards the top, I'm going to go more towards greenery because I do have a lot of that as well. I chose this bag because it has the big bins like this. I knew that it would have a lot of capacity. You could always do like the shoe holders that I did on my other door as well if you don't have quite as much. But I knew I had a pretty significant stash. And so I'm glad I went large on this because I needed every inch to fill this up with all of my florals. But look at this. I got everything that was kind of loose like that in this and it kind of looks cool too when they're all displayed together like that but just an easy way to store your floral collection using like an over the door a shoe holder and now basically every surface on this wall of my guest room is completely being utilized for craft supplies i'm doing some of my really large ones here on the top those even fit as well and I was really impressed with the capacity of that. Here it is with all of my florals all stashed there. You can't even see the holder anymore. It's kind of its own little jungle over there. So I think that's going to finish off this wall. This took me about a whole day to organize, but we're going to move on here to the next wall. I picked up four of these. These are the two by three, so there's six of them. I stacked mine and actually tethered it to the wall. Hopefully it will stay put. And I'm gonna do a whole wall of storage over here on this wall. Now, these were the florals that were like wreaths, vines, and succulents that I didn't think would work really well on the shoe rack. And so I'm just gonna take one of those bins and load it up with all of those. There's plenty of room in these bins, so I can kind of do all of it together, and then I can just kind of dig through it whenever I need some of it. And I want it to be close by my floral, so I'm going to put mine right over here. Up next, I try to get together all of my candle collection. So this is like my battery operated and my real candles, tea lights, even like my wax melts, anything that's just like candle related floating candles, all of that, all together. And I pile that up in one of those little Target bins. I have been stocking up on these Target bins forever. And the little two by three um, cube organizers that I'm using there, I got on clearance a really great deal at Target. I think they were like college supply kind of thing that they clearanced off. And then underneath the candles, I wanna keep it organized. So then I'm gonna go with like my glass candle holders and my glass candles. I thought, kind of made sense to store those together. And we can store these close to the candles that we just did. So I'm gonna put these right underneath those. Kind of make a little candle row over here. And to keep with the theme, I have tons of candle holders that I use from Dollar Tree. I love the blue ones the most, as you can tell. But I'm gonna kind of pile all these up here and we can store these with the candles and you know, it looks like I have a lot of these, but I really do use these all the time. And whenever I see the blue ones, I definitely pick them up because I know I'm going to need them for a DIY. 
Now I'm gonna kind of stick with the glass theme. These are my Dollar Tree vases and like my little creamers and stuff like that. And I'm gonna store those all together. I don't want it to be too heavy. I am gonna pile them a little bit, but nothing crazy. And kind of load those closer to the bottom because that's gonna be nice and heavy. And then kind of sticking with the glass theme, these are all of like my Dollar Tree jars and stuff like that that I use for crafting and DIYs. And I'm gonna go ahead and store those there too. Any of my like kind of containers, bottles, stuff like that. And I even found some more jars that I have there and pop those in as well. Now this is my ribbon stash that did not fit on the door. This is like the wider ribbons and stuff like that. So I thought, no big deal, I'll do a bin of the ribbons too. Maybe I can clear up some room in my organizer now that I know where everything is and it's accessible. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna pile all these thicker ribbons right here in this bin and hopefully I'll be able to find them as well. I wanna store like my ribbons, my fabrics, different things like that over on this wall and just lots of craft supplies. Those are nice and lightweight, so I stored those at the top. Now, and this is kind of my gnome supplies. I stock up on these Christmas and other holidays. I love like the little gnome beards on the stockings. I use those for gnomes year round. So I don't wanna put these away with seasonal storage because I'm gonna need to have these accessible for DIYs throughout the year, including the cute little booties, the little ornaments. I love those for gnomes. Those are little Christmas ornaments, but again, I do domes year round, so I do want like just a little gnome bin here for my gnome stash. Up next is fabric. I like to craft with like the Dollar Tree baby blankets, bandanas, bags, pillowcases, you know, whatever I can find. It's kind of a little miscellaneous um, fabric supply. And I think I can still find things if I kind of mix these together. Um, and these are just kind of leftover things I have from other DIYs. Or my favorite is like that blue baby blanket. And sometimes I use the pink one as well. It works as a great source as felt for crafting. I'm going to put that right over here. And we're filling up this craft wall. Now, speaking of like weird kind of materials I use to craft, I love to use like the Dollar Tree washcloths and towels and placemats and stuff like that for some really cute fabric choices for DIYs. And that's exactly what this is. So I'm going to kind of store this kind of stuff together, kind of makes sense to store it together. And any kind of kind of weird towels that I'm going to be using for crafting. And we're going to store that right there by the baby blankets. Now, speaking of fabric, I have kind of a huge burlap stash. I'm so excited that Dollar Tree carries burlap, but you know, it can be hard to find. So whenever I find it, I try to stock up. A lot of it is like the shore living. I really like the bee burlaps and stuff like that. And so I'm leaving these, you know, all on their rolls like that. So I can just pile them kind of upright in these bins. They fit in there really nicely. And I'm not going to have any problem filling this up because I, I love this stuff. So I have quite a few of them. And I do have scrap burlap too. I'll show you how I store that as well in this craft room. And then this is my Dollar Tree fabric stash. I love buying these little rolls of like scrap fabric at Dollar Tree. You can find some really cute patterns and stuff like that. And it has plenty of material on there for most DIYs. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the burlap, just leaving them in the rolls and kind of just storing those upright so I can just kind of look in the bin and see exactly what I have and be able to pull out any fabric that I need. And I do have like, you know, some loose fabrics too. Um, that I probably need to work in there too. There's plenty of room in there. I might be able to put some scraps in there as well. And I'm going to store that right, right there underneath. So I kind of have like a whole fabric row that we did there. Now the next items I'm going to store are like my Dollar Tree canvases. Um, some of these are like canvases that I've gotten on clearance at other places and stuff like that. I don't craft with canvases a lot, but I sometimes I do need them. And so I'm just going to do a whole bin of canvases. Since I don't use them too often, I'm going to store mine up here at the top. 
Now these I do use a lot. These are the burlap canvases from Dollar Tree. They come in an eight by 10 and a five by seven size, and they can be a little tricky to find. So I always try to stock up on these because they go great for coastal crafting and any kind of a rustic feel as well. And so I'm just gonna pile up another bin of burlap canvases and store those right underneath of the regular canvas. This is kind of my frame collection. I do pick up a lot of like eight by 10 and five by seven frames when I'm doing crafting with the burlap canvases and stuff like that. But some of these are kind of like odd sizes that I've bought, not used, that I'll kind of just have in my stash for another project. I like to have a little bit of a variety of these that I could just kind of go to when I'm crafting if I need a frame for something. And then this is kind of some more frames, um, some of the kind of like miscellaneous stuff. Some of these have some really great like distressed frames. I think those work good for crafting, but it's going to be kind of like a little bit of a miscellaneous bin with frames and signs. And we're going to pile that up, store that right over here. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. Again, I was trying to take four days of storage into one video. <laughs> Now coming up next is just kind of another kind of miscellaneous bin, more Dollar Tree signs, things that I can't really hang on the wall. Um, very kind of miscellaneous stuff that I have for crafting and even like some of the little tiny signs and like the little easels and stuff like that. Kind of a miscellaneous bin. And then my next bin, I'm going to do just my small sign stash. These are all just small signs from the Dollar Tree. Some of them are like just like board signs. Some of them have frames, but I like to have some of these accessible for crafting, even though it's kind of something they have all the time, but a nice like little medium sized sign bin right there at the bottom. Now I want to continue kind of um, my wood supplies. This is kind of like my little wood bins. Some of my like kind of 3D things like wood stacks, little trucks, stuff like that kind of like stuff that you would find at Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I'm just going to pile mine all in a bin and finish this off. We're going to be doing the final row over here on this wall of loading it up with craft supplies. Now, as you can see, this is like kind of the, you know, the jar signs, any of like the wood words. A lot of these are like little signs that I can use on tear trays and such like that. Um, some of them are leftover seasonal and some of the stuff I can just remake to kind of make it whatever I want, but kind of, um, kind of like things, kind of like a chunky wood sign bin. Now I love the Dollar Tree wood slices, so I have a whole lot of those, and I'm gonna store those with some of my other Dollar Tree signs. Um, kind of a little bit of a miscellaneous bin too, but kind of all on the same scale in size. If I store this stuff together, I should be able to go through here and find things without any problem. And those wood slice signs, I use those for lots of different kinds of DIYs. Another one of my Dollar Tree favorites are these like chunky, like wood slab signs. I love these for tear trays. So as you can see, I have quite a big supply of those as well. I'm going to load up a bin of those and other like similar kind of like plain signs from the Dollar Tree that I can use for a quick, easy DIY. And we're going to store that too. I kind of wanted to keep a lot of like my wood um, signs and items for crafting all together like that. And then this is kind of like the wood planks and all of like the thin wood items that I use from the Dollar Tree. I love these packaged ones. They come in like squares, um, rectangles and stuff like that. You can build great things with those. And then just some of my like thin signs from the Dollar Tree, kind of a little bit of everything. As you can see, stars, arrows, trucks, kind of whatever I have. I'm going to pile that all in this one. And then I have room for one more bin over here on this wall. I want to kind of continue like kind of the wood theme that I've got going on over here of wood items from the Dollar Tree. And this one is going to be my bin for all of like my chunky wood. So like my little chunky wood signs, my little chunky shapes, um, stars, blocks, you know, the kind of the chunkier stuff. Um, so I can kind of keep that separated from some of the thinner things to kind of make it a little bit easier to find. I love crafting with these, obviously, as well. 
And that is going to finish off this wall of crafting. So this is how it looks. So we did a total of 24 bins, kind of like a little craft warehouse we got going on in here. And the green thing you see over to the left is actually a green screen. Um, if I start appearing in my videos, I thought I might use, I thought it would be a great way to hide what's behind it, which is the queen size mattress that goes on the bed for this room. So I'm just kind of disguising it up against the wall, hiding it behind that. Hey guys, I wanted to let you guys know about my private Facebook group. I have it linked in the description below. And I'd love to see you over on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or Pinterest. My handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, back to the organizing. Now I have a little bit of room but um, in front of the mattress there. And so I thought I would do some of the little roll carts, um, plastic carts that I have from Target. They're kind of carts I already had um, and they work great for things like this. So in this bin, I'm gonna do like all of my scrapbook paper, my paper, my calendars, anything kind of paper related. And it's a nice flat drawer like that. Moving on up, we're going to switch to like some of the floor tiles that I use for crafting. And I'm also going to kind of mix it up with some of my felt that I use for crafting to make sure that I have that kind of all kept together. It's a nice lightweight thing that we can put in these little plastic drawers. And again, it's on wheels, so this would probably be in the way, but I can always wheel this out of the craft room. Up next, I always like to stock up on the moss, the reindeer moss, the Spanish moss. I use those for crafting all the time from Dollar Tree. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do a whole bin of the moss as well. I told you guys my stash was big. <laughs> and then we're going to finish up this cart with my Dollar Tree foam collection, like the, the foam balls, the different foam pieces I use when I'm doing florals and stuff like that with crafting and a nice lightweight item to fill this up because these plastic carts are not super sturdy. They're not my favorite, but I think it'll work for this purpose. I do have a second one and I do have room for another cart there too that we can put in front of the green screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my other one as well. For this one, I'm gonna be doing like the little placemats that I use from Dollar Tree for crafting, some of the little removable wallpaper and um, some of the cutting mats. They're all about the same size, nice and flat. And we're gonna put that here in the bottom. Now, the, I really love crafting with a little synthetic burlap bags from Dollar Tree, so I have quite a stash of that. I also have a stash of, you know, leftover burlap and like some of the rolled burlaps and stuff like that as well, even some of the burlap bags from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna go ahead and pile all this together. It's gonna be kind of like another little burlap drawer for me to use for crafting. And I just absolutely love those bags. They're so easy to craft with and they don't fray. I also like to use like leather bags from Dollar Tree, some of the rolled leather and just some of the other kind of more unusual stuff like the shelf liners, um, different kinds of bags and stuff like that from Dollar Tree. So I kind of try to gather similar things together um, for some more craft supplies right there. I also love to craft with like the little hats and the bags like this from the Dollar Tree. I like the look of them and some of the placemats too. You can kind of get that seagrass look. So I kind of piled all of those together, nice and lightweight, and we can finish off our second cart on wheels that we can display up against that wall, but it's gonna be removable if I need to get that bed out and set it up in the room. But I used every square inch of that wall as well, including storing the mattress. The bed frame, again, is in the closet. Now for my other wall. I already had one of these four by three organizers in the closet, so I pulled it out and then I bought another one. Um, I got one of these at Walmart. Actually, both of them I think I got from Walmart. And we're gonna do a nether wall of bins, but this time we're gonna be doing seasonal stuff. So you guys know I'm a beach lover, so we're gonna start with beach stuff first. A lot of times I pick up plastic items from the summer aisle or the toy aisle at Dollar Tree that are beach related. So I kind of did all the plastic stuff together. It's nice and lightweight. We can store that at the top. And I obviously love the beachy Dollar Tree canvases because I have way too many of them. And maybe now that they're accessible, I will be able to use these. But I always pick them up when I see them. A lot of times they have them in the spring um, with a short living, but you know, a lot of these I've just got 
anytime at Dollar Tree. Whenever I see a beach win, obviously I pick it up because I have a ton of them. But I love using these for crafting because you can just take them off the canvases and kind of use them on whatever you want. So I'm going to try to see if I can get all these in one bin. And do like a little beach canvas bin. And I'm going to be trying to store all of my shore living supplies that I have over here left over from last year. Like all of these like little wood cutouts of creatures and stuff like that. I have a lot of these left over because I use these year round for crafting whenever I do coastal. So I'm going to kind of pile all these together. Any of like the small flat wood pieces, everything is a beachy theme. And a lot of them, as you can see, are still in the package. That so makes them even easier to store. And we can pile those in here and store that right over here. I want to do like a whole row of beachy shore living items. These are some other items I had left over, like the wood signs, the wood starfish, um, the wood anchors and stuff like that. And whatever I have left over from last year, hopefully we can start doing some shore living crafting again soon. Can't wait for this stuff to come back at Dollar Tree. But even if my store is slow, I'm going to be prepared because I've already got a little bit of my stash here left over from last year. And continuing on with my beachy items, this is going to be some of my like beach glassware and then some of the plastic items like the shells and like little sea creatures and stuff like that, that I can put kind of in the bin with the glass without really having to worry about breaking any of the glass bottles but i have quite a few of these left over sometimes i use these for vases the smaller ones i like to use for candle holders and stuff like that but they're so pretty i love these and the little plastic shells you guys know i craft with those all the time those are great i even have a thrifted one that i found and then i'm going to finish it off with just some of the plastic like sea creatures and stuff like that that i can use for like tear trays and stuff like that and we're going to put that one right down here. Up next, I'm going to kind of switch it over to glass. This is like my glass beach stuff, including like um, my little fairy um, garden ones that are the beach items. So I'm going to start with like the buoys, any of the ceramic balls and stuff like that. Um, mermaid tails, starfish. Anything that's kind of like porcelain, that's beach stuff. A lot of this is stuff I'm going to be using, you know, for tear trays, fairy gardens and stuff like that. My little beach houses and stuff like that and beach fans and stuff like that. And I just kind of store those all together like that. I think they'll store nicely like that. And we'll pop that one right down here at the bottom. Now this is kind of some of like my beach fabric stuff like that tablecloths, napkins, fabric, anything that's like beachy theme, I kind of want to keep this separate from my other stash. So when I'm doing coastal crafting, I can just find one place to come grab any of that stuff that I'm looking for. Definitely gonna have to stock up on fabric. I'm a little low on that. And I love decoupaging with like the napkins and stuff like that from the Dollar Tree too. So I have a little beach fabric bin. Now these are all the leftover signs I have from Shore Living. Probably need to craft a lot of these. I have a lot more than I thought I did, but I'm gonna stack these all together. Since these bins are so large, it doesn't really have any problem storing these large signs like this. And as you can see, you can pile quite a few in here. And if you haven't noticed, I switched colors on the swall. We're doing like the mint green bins and trying to do this little organizer with um, the mint green. Now, working with seasonal, I still have Valentine's stuff out. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing another Valentine's Day video. It's getting a little late, but I still have Valentine's supplies left. So I'm going to go ahead and store those here. This is like my Valentine florals that I have left over. Some of those flowers and stuff, if I don't use the roses, I can probably recycle into kind of my, some of my spring crafting stuff. This is like um, my Valentine's Day ribbon stash. I like to use the decals and like a lot of bags and stuff like that for crafting for Valentine's Day. And this is kind of the stuff that I have left over for that kind of like items. So we're going to kind of pile all these together and kind of stickers, kind of miscellaneous stuff too. And I just found these heart wreath forms the other day at Dollar Tree. Sometimes I get this stuff so late that I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have time to use those or not, but I'm going to go ahead and pile that in there as well. And we have a little bit of Valentine's Day stash going on here. I'm going to be doing all my seasonal stuff. I got it all out, got it all organized for the spring. 
This is some more of the Valentine stuff I have left over, some of the signs. And I got those little wood bead heart wreaths recently too. I need to try to DIY those. I think they're so cute. And just kind of any of the wood love signs, anything that I might be able to use for Valentine's Day, especially like the hearts and stuff like that. We're going to pile in that bin. And I'm kind of going with a row so I can kind of keep my Valentine's Day stuff all together. And this is some more stuff. This is kind of some of the Valentine's Day words and stuff like that. I have a lot of these left over from last year. I probably should have used a few more of these this year. But, you know, you never know. I might do another Valentine's Day video before this season is over. I guess we will see. Otherwise, I will store these for next year with my seasonal storage. And moving on to St. Patrick's Day. I have a little bit. Um, this is going to be like my St. Patrick's Day window decals. I found this great like um, greenery from Target Dollar Spot the other day that looks like shamrocks. And then some of the little shamrocks from the Dollar Tree to get me started with some St. Patrick's Day DIYs, supplies. And this is some more stuff like some shamrock signs, kind of a miscellaneous bin of stuff I have left over and new stuff that I've grabbed for St. Patrick's Day. Anything with like a shamrock or a rainbow. I love decorating for every season and that includes St. Patrick's Day. I always try to include lots of St. Patty's Day DIY videos as well. So I have another bin of those supplies. Now, this bin is going to be bee supplies. Every year I do bee videos. They do so well. I'm going to kind of mix this bin together like ladybugs, butterflies, dragonflies, and bees. And I've picked up some of that stuff so far this year. I can't wait to do a bee DIY video this year. This is going to give us a good start for some bee supplies. I'm going to kind of store that. I do that with my spring stuff. Now, this is like some of the fairy garden stuff that I've got so far this year for spring and some of the miscellaneous stuff I have like spring flowers, um, watering cans, flowers, spring bicycles, anything kind of like that. A lot of this is going to be like smaller items that I can use again for tear trays and stuff like that. Anything that's kind of springy I'm going to pile in here, including like leftover flowers that I have from a Valentine's Day and even some like dried flowers like that, things that would be great for spring DIY crafting. And then this is going to be kind of like my fabric sticker kind of bin. Um, I have a few spring signs, but not a lot. Anything that was kind of flat, we're going to kind of work all together here of things I can use for spring crafting. Don't have quite a lot yet, but I had a little bit of stuff left over from last year too. And I kind of piled those all together like that. I did have a little bit of Valentine's Day stuff still left over. This stuff really needs to be organized because a lot of the stuff is like not in the bags and stuff like that anymore. Um, and so before I put this away for the end of the season, I'm definitely going to have to go and put these things in baggies and stuff like that. So it's not such a wild mess like that. But for right now, we're just going to pile it all in the spin the rest of the Valentine's Day DIY supplies. And I really hope you're getting lots of craft organization DIYs or at least a little inspiration to organize your craft stash too so that maybe you can actually find stuff because mine was literally out of control. <laughs> now another one of my favorite holidays for spring is Easter and this is some of the newer stuff that I picked up so far this year. The Easter grass, they have these really cute like bottle brush trees and stuff like that. So I'm kind of doing like a little Easter, Easter greenery bin here. To get me started for Easter DIYs. Up next I'm going to do some of like the fabric trim pom-poms. Anything kind of fabric ribbons and stuff like that that I have that's kind of Easter specific and we're going to kind of pile this all in together. I don't have quite a lot of it yet but I'm sure this will grow. <laughs> I've got some room for storage there. Up next, I'm going to kind of put all of my eggs together. Some of these are like some of the farm eggs, some of the gold eggs and stuff like that from Dollar Tree that I can use for crafting. And even some of like the egg garland and stuff that they have new this year. And just kind of pile in all of my Easter eggs together to do a, like a little egg bin. That will be handy. And then this is going to be kind of a miscellaneous bin. It's going to have like some of the wood beads, carrots and stuff like that 
candles, tear tray items, and stuff like that that I have left over. Some of it's new, like that little blue bunny there. And piling all of this in. I like to get like the little moss bunnies and stuff like that. Kind of like a little bit of a mod podge of Easter supplies that I can use for DIYs. Then I'm going to kind of do all of my wood stuff together. This is like the Easter words, like the little wood shapes. Any of like kind of the little package stuff, like little mini carrots and stuff like that. They even have, I saw them have those little mini mushrooms there in the pastel colors for Easter. And kind of any of that small package stuff, I'm going to store all that together right here in another little Easter bin. And we've almost got all of these filled up over here on this side. For the bottom, I'm going to finish it off with my Easter signs that I have. I kind of have a variety of kind of plain signs. Some of them are already painted. And I even got that adorable little Easter Bunny tear tray that you see there from the Dollar Tree Plus this year. And that's going to look so cute for crafting. I chose the blue because I think it's going to look great with my decor. And we filled up both of those. So another 24 bins. That is all of my seasonal items on this side, keeping all that kind of stuff separated from kind of my year round stuff. And I can always switch it out. Now I did have two more of the four by four bins around my house that I really didn't need. And so I had enough room to pile those on top of each other to kind of provide a little bit more storage because you know your girl needed more. I'm gonna start it out with some of the Dollar Tree wood slices. Um, I use these all the time for crafting. They look like driftwood. They work great for that and they're hard to find. So whenever I see them, I try to stock up on those. So that is going to be my little driftwood bin of wood slices. And then speaking of driftwood, this is the driftwood vase filler that I get at Target. I try to stock up on this when it goes on sale. Um, I absolutely love it. I'll post a link, um, a Target link to that on this video as well. And it works great for crafting driftwood DIYs that look really beachy. And I have plenty to fill up an entire bin. Speaking of things I use all the time, rope. I use Dollar Tree rope all the time. So this is all of my white nautical rope that I have from Dollar Tree. And some of them are partial, some of them are full. I don't really care. I just want it all kind of together. So I'm just going to pile a bin full of the white nautical rope from Dollar Tree like that. And I don't just use the white nautical rope. I also use a lot of the brown rope as well. So I have a pretty significant stash of that as well. I'm going to kind of pile that all together here in another bin. So it's going to be like kind of like just my craft materials and stuff like that over here in that little two by two. Now I do have some stuff left over like the galvanized metal. I have way too much of this. I'm going to have to remind myself not to buy any more of this until I start crafting with it. But I think I can get all my galvanized metal things here in one bin. A lot of them were like little flat signs. And I really loved those, those little round signs on the stands. I use those to stand up my DIYs a lot. And so I always have a little bit of a stash of those as well. But this is going to be all of my metal items right over here. And then this is kind of like, you know, like the little houses and like the little house boxes and little windows and stuff like that from Dollar Tree that I love to craft with and I kind of like to stock up on too. So I kind of have these ready to go. And so I'm just going to kind of pile these all together in another bin. It's going to be a nice and full as well. Finish it off with a couple cloches and put this here next to our galvanized metal stash. Now, this is a little wood that I use for crafting. So like Jenga blocks, popsicle sticks. I use the wooden dowels, uh, rulers a lot from Dollar Tree. Any of that kind of stuff, I'm going to try to store all of this kind of crafting wood together. Um, even like chopsticks and stuff like that that I've gotten on clearance. Anything that I use for kind of building stuff. I really love crafting with the Dollar Tree rulers. And I even have some of this like bamboo that I got on Amazon and kind of pile all that in together. I even found some wood bamboo rings there that I had and a few more popsicle sticks. So I popped those in there as well. And then this is gonna be kind of my plastic, kind of miscellaneous junk bin um, with like buckets, dollhouses, um, tin bins, ping pong balls, just kind of miscellaneous stuff that I might need for crafting that I have left over in my stash. 
And we're going to fill up this last here, bin here with that. And that's going to fill up both of those um, eight. So total another eight bins, but I had a little bit of room on top. So I'm going to do another one of the little plastic shelves that I had left over up there. I have like three bins left over, so I popped them all together. And this is going to be kind of my miscellaneous material, like doilies, rug liners, different things like that that I use for crafting, but things I use rarely. So I can put this nice and high. I'm actually going to put it up on the very top of one of these little plastic drawer organizers to make sure I use every inch of space over here. Um, this is some of like the Dollar Tree polyfill. I like to craft with like the mop heads and stuff like that. And even sometimes like the bath rugs and stuff like that from Dollar Tree. So these are nice and lightweight. I think these will be great right here as well. Kind of another little miscellaneous bin. And then this is the vinyl from Dollar Tree. I don't use this for my Cricut, so I want this kind of in a separate stash. But I do like to pick up like these patterns and colors, and I like to use these in DIYs. So I went ahead and took these out of the boxes so I can kind of see exactly what I have. And just store those all in a bin here. And again, I do not like or recommend those for the Cricut because they don't do well with my mats have a little bit of room left over here for storage. So I'm gonna put some of my larger glass faces and things over here as a little safe place that I can kind of hide these out. And using up, of course, every bit of storage I can on that wall. That's how it looks with all of my seasonal decor, um, some other supplies as well for crafting. And we used every inch of that wall as well. Now on my fourth wall, I set up a desk for my heat press. I also have my sublimation printer over there, my other printer that I use for crafting, um, paper, ink, any kind of supplies. And I got that little cart at Target for my printers and I already had the desk. And then I have a little work surface there that I can use for editing videos like this one. Let me give you a little looksy-loo all around the room so far. We're not done yet because we do have a little bit of room in here that I can use for storage. But basically, I am done with all of the walls. So we'll go around and around here and you can kind of see how much craft items I was able to get in this room. I was kind of impressed with how much I got in here. And um, it's going to make this room much more functional. Now, I told you there was still some room left. I'm going to actually use some of these little metal carts from Target um, because I can wheel these out if necessary. And I can kind of use the top of them for a table as well because I'm going to need tables to put the bins on to be able to go through things and find things when I'm crafting. And I don't really have room for a table in this room, and I want something that's going to be a little bit more portable. So for this first bin, we're going to load it up with beach supplies, like my stash of little Dollar Tree shells, sand dollars, starfish, and the coral ornaments. And these are just little white book bins that I got on clearance after back to school at Target. They kind of nest together, so I thought those would work well. This is kind of like my beach fairy garden collection, little tiny items that I can use for beach crafting. And I like to use like the little grow animals and some of the little beach animals and stuff like that they have in the toy aisle at Dollar Tree too for my beach crafting. So I'm going to put those next to that. It kind of makes sense. And then my little stash of little chipboard sea creature decor, since I'm going for like a beach theme on this little cart. And I have all of those together as well. And then I just have some like the nautical um, rope balls from Dollar Tree and they fit nicely in one of those bins as well. So that pretty much fills it up because we're going to leave the top of this empty so that I can use this for a work surface. But I do have room over here on the side. So I'm going to do some of the metal hooks. I actually got these at, um, I think, Amazon, just regular metal S hooks. And since this is a nice, strong metal cart, I think it can hang things securely. So I'm going to do some of my like beach signs, the long signs that I have left over from like the shore living line. And they fit great here. You can do two kind of side by side and it doesn't block anything if you do it on the end. So I have this end available as well. So I might as well take advantage of that too. I'm going to put a few more S hooks. These are like some of the seahorse signs that I have left over. And then I had like, you know, some more different kinds of beach signs as well. And those work really nicely on there too. 
So that pretty much does it for my first cart, but I actually picked up a total of three of these. And so I'll have plenty of storage that I can store here in the center of the room while I'm using it as a craft room and not as a guest room. So on this bin, of course, I'm gonna leave the top empty again. And then this is gonna be like some of my like odds and ends. So this is like some of my trim pieces from the Dollar Tree. I like the burlap trims. Sometimes they come in packages like that, sometimes in rolls. And these little bins are little plastic storage bins that I got at Target. They're $6 a piece, but they're great because they're clear. You can see exactly what's in there and they stack really nicely. So I did some raffia. This is some of like the, you know, decorative trim, the macrame cord that I love from Dollar Tree. I've been trying to stock up on colors that I see there as well and just kind of pile those in there. I can do a total of six on that shelf easily and I'll still be able to get to things. This is kind of a miscellaneous twine, kind of like pop pipe cleaner bin. And again, very miscellaneous, like metal ribbons, different kinds of trims. This is kind of my pom-pom stash. And it's great because I can see in, I can know exactly what I'm going for on these, but they're stored very nicely and neatly. I have my yarn stash. This is kind of my burlap um, flowers and burlap leaves and stuff like that. And then this one is gonna be a deco mesh. Now that filled up that cart nicely. I'm also gonna use the ends on these as well because I still have some more stuff to store. Big surprise, right? <laughs> so again, I'm gonna use some S hooks here on the side because that worked so well before. And I'm gonna do some of my longer signs like these little hanging blank signs and some of the leftover like long signs that I have from other seasons because I can always use those off season um, just by not using the shape or covering the shape up with something else. So I had like some pumpkin ones and some star ones to hang nicely on that side. I'm gonna flip this card around and we are gonna use the storage space over here as well. Again, just a couple more S hooks on this side and we can hang some more of the longer signs that I have. Um, these fit so nicely on the sides of the cart but if you wanted to hang yours on a pegboard, it would totally work as well. My pegboards were pretty loaded, so this was a good option. And those long skinny signs just fit perfectly like that. Now I told you I picked up three of these little carts from Target, and so this is the third and final one. Um, the, again, the Target bins, this one's like my wood letters from Dollar Tree. This one's gonna be like my Scrabble letters from Dollar Tree. And so this is definitely my smaller stuff. This is like my wood numbers. And then this is like my felt letters and stuff like that. Anything that I can use for signs, for words. I'm trying to keep all that kind of stuff together here and nicely organized. My alphabet stamp pad um, from the um, Dollar General. And then like my wooden tags from the Dollar Tree will fill out that shelf nicely. Now down here, I'm gonna do just kind of some more miscellaneous stuff here. Some of like the solo wood flowers and stuff like that. Um, I've stocked up on quite a bit. Some of my clay and like model magic that I use for crafting from the Dollar Tree. This one is like some miscellaneous like bows, flowers, felt flowers, that kind of stuff. This one is like my wood rings that I use for crafting. And then this one's piled high with Dollar Tree wood beads. And that fills up that cart as well. Now, again, I'm leaving the top of it blank because I'm gonna use that surface for tables and work surfaces. But again, I can use the side. And for this one, I'm gonna do like three hooks on each um, row because I'm gonna do smaller items. I'm gonna do like my sticker stash from Dollar Tree. And I tried to sort my stash out kind of like items, um, at least like kind of the same size stuff so I can kind of hang it together you know, kind of like you'd hang it in a store. And I tend to buy stickers like this because I like them and then forget that I have them and I end up with like a crazy supply like this. So hopefully with them hanging here and accessible, I will not buy any more stickers this year. That'd be a good idea. <laughs> and again, since these are shorter, I can also do a row down here um of hooks here on these metal carts and the, these carts are really durable before i was using the cheaper plastic carts from target 
And I actually lost a lot of shore living items because it like literally broke and fell apart and broke stuff in my garage. So I was happy to get these metal carts. I think they're about $35 at Target. I'm not totally sure on that. I'll have to see if I can find a link to the, this cart as well, as well as those great little plastic bins. I love those plastic bins. They stack so nicely. If you wanted to use Dollar Tree, I'm sure you could probably find a, find something that stacks, but I couldn't find anything that was the right size, clear, and stacked at Dollar Tree. So I decided to go a little bit more high-end on my storage. Over here on this side, we're doing like the rub-on transfers. We're going to do the glass stickers. Again, I try to sort everything out, try to keep like items together. And again, we're going to use every square inch of this cart that I can use for a storage. So up here on the top, I'm going to do a couple more hooks. And these carts, you know, if I have a guest coming, I can just wheel these to my garage or wherever to store these to get these out of the room and open up the room um, so I can actually install the bed in here again. I'm going to finish it off with some of my burlap flags from the Dollar Tree. And that is it. <laughs> that is everything we're going to put in this final reveal. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you got lots of crafting um, storage organization or at least a little bit of inspiration. I really love how this room turned out. So let me give you a little tour around here. I'm actually going to store the carts in the middle of the room. You'll see towards the end. Um, but for now, they're kind of kind of pushed over to one side. But again, let me show you around. Try. Do you know I'm looking and I can't help but smile? Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on, I put my feet up, and we just sing along, and I can't help but feeling just loving. so much for joining me here today on YouTube. I really appreciate you making it all the way to the end of the video. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting my channel. Thank you so much to Karen O'Haran, Pamela Bergeron, I am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Nancy Wunner, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Whitney Harrison, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, and Sandy C. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate you. If you'd like to become a Crafty Beach Bum member, all you have to do is hit the join button underneath this video. It's $4.99 a month. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos and you can cancel anytime. And I'd really appreciate the support. If you're looking for more DIYs today from Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.